is Channel 9 Eyewitness News, 6 o'clock. A judge hands down the sentence in the trial of Ray Carew. The trial to me was no more than just a circus. Ray Carew. Oh, that's the bitch I was referring to who got me into this. Chief Prosecutor Gentry Caudell told me that he's lost 10 pounds during these three months. Let him be held responsible for the acts that he's done. It is the judgment of the court that the defendant be in prison for a period of not less than 196 months. At least 18 years in prison. That was the sentence for Ray Carruth. It could have been death. Carruth never spoke in open court and never took the stand to share his side of the story. Mark Becker takes us behind the testimony, the tension, and the verdict. Exactly one year and four days after Sharika Adams was shot, prosecutors would begin to make their case to a jury that the man behind her murder was her boyfriend, Ray Carruth, and their first witness would be Sharika herself. What part of the body you been shot at? I don't know. <laughs> In an agonizing call to 911, her voice trembling with fear and pain, Adams pointed clearly to Carruth. How did this happen? <laughs> She was hanging on for dear life, trying to save her life and that of her baby. Gentry Caudill led the prosecution team that would show jurors the words Sharika had scrawled on a pad of paper at the hospital, describing how Carruth had stopped his car in front of hers, blocking her, while another car pulled up and the shooting started. It was chilling testimony from the grave, but prosecutors knew they would need more. But we had uh, valid concerns about the admissibility of those statements, and the statement of the 911 did not put him actually at the scene at the time. So as the trial approached, we you know, we were ready to go with what we had, but we still felt we were in bad need of uh, testimony from co-defendants, and we were getting nowhere. With time running out, they offered plea deals to all three of Carew's co-defendants. Only one agreed, the man who'd fired those fatal shots, Van Brett Watkins. So we finally made the hard decision to uh, accept uh, plea of guilty to all the charges, secondary murder and the other charges from and Brett Watkins and use him as a witness. Watkins figured to be the prosecution's star witness, but he was far from the perfect witness. He'd flashed a violent temper with police in their interviews. He got combative uh, to the point where he stood up like he wanted to, to have a physical confrontation with him. And on the witness stand, prosecutors knew he could be a wild card. But just as the trial was beginning, they got a break. During the uh, jury selection, a surprise development occurred when um, Kennedy's attorney came to us and said that Kennedy wanted the truth to come out and he was willing to testify without a plea arrangement. Kennedy was Michael Kennedy, the 24-year-old who'd admitted he was driving the car Watkins was in when he fired the fatal shots. With his attorney's blessing, Kennedy agreed to testify without a plea deal. And he told the jury why Carruth wanted Sharika out of the way. She was trying to juice him for money, and he was already paying like almost $5,000 in child support. And more importantly, he also put Carruth at the murder scene. Ray went over a hill and then down in a dip. Then he stopped his car. She stopped behind his. I stopped behind her. Then Watkins told me to pull up beside her car. So I pulled up beside her car, and he started shooting her car. Kennedy's testimony was powerful, but Caruso's attorney, David Rudolph, would have an answer. He was simply covering up his own drug dealing. Uh, so he had, to, he had to come up with some explanation of why he happened to be driving the car. And that explanation, Rudolph would argue, was that Ray Carruth was in fact the real target of the shooting that night because he'd backed out of a drug deal with Kennedy and Watkins and was afraid. Did Ray see them pull up next to Sharika? Yeah. Did Ray stop? No. Ray took off because Ray was afraid that Watkins was after him. 
To make his case, Rudolph chose not to put Garuth on the stand. Instead, he called two unlikely witnesses. A sergeant at the Mecklenburg County Jail who said Van Brett Watkins had told her about the drug deal gone back. But it was Ray's fault. If he had just given us the money, none of this would have happened. But it was Watkins himself who would be the cornerstone of Carruth's defense. Van Brett Watkins is a, um, a psychopath, a sociopath. Rudolph knew that putting Watkins on the stand would be a risky move. But he also knew that if he wasn't the perfect witness, Watkins could also be the perfect villain. I fired one shot. And four more shots. Bam, 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 bam. Watkins appeared cold, almost heartless, as he described how he shot Sharika that night. But as Rudolph pushed and prodded, his temper took over. I'm 286 pounds. OK, I would rip you like a rag doll. Watkins' threat was an unforgettable moment. And another came when he pointed across the room at Ray Carew. This is the I was referring to. He didn't stand up. I stood up for mine. I say I did it. Mm -hmm. I did it because he made me do it. Watkins' wild testimony was riveting, and it would make a huge impression on the jury. Van Brett Watkins' demeanor certainly did influence the jury, because he was an inhuman person in the perception of everyone on that jury. Herb Brown is a retired attorney who was one of those jurors. And 18 years later, Watkins' testimony is still fresh in his mind. That man was an animal. He had no conscience whatsoever. Finally, after dozens of witnesses and two months of testimony, prosecutors and Caruso attorneys made their closing arguments. Four days later, jurors came back with their verdicts. In a surprising twist, they found Caruth guilty of planning Sharika Adams' murder, but not guilty of the murder itself, a split decision that left both sides disappointed and puzzled. Do you recall what you thought when you heard that verdict come down? I was surprised. Was it a loss for you then? Well, as I said, I was surprised and disappointed. Um, I'll leave that call for someone else. Did you see it as a win when not the jury the came back with that not, verdict? Not at the time. Looking back on it now, it's a win because Ray Carruth is going to be paroled. He's got the whole rest of his life ahead of him. Uh, and um, he could have been on death row. In one final irony, the man who so wanted to destroy Ray Carruth, Van Brett Watkins, may have saved his life because in the eyes of the jury, he became the real monster behind what was a monstrous crime. And this was the trial, the biggest one Charlotte had ever seen. Our Glenn Counts covered it. Glenn, you told me for you, you've seen nothing compared to this before or since. Well, Erica, there's no question this was Charlotte's trial of the century. I mean, we didn't have a big top. It was a circus-like atmosphere. We didn't have a big top, but we had a tent city outside with media who came in from all over the country. And of course, we had a lot of people showing up for the trial, you know, people who just wanted to be seen. And also, we had people who just wanted to show up just to say that they were a part of it. And some of the most intriguing testimony came from the trigger man. Absolutely. Van Brett Watkins. What a character. Now, I've been writing back and forth with him for weeks. Now, he said he would speak with me for this program if we met a list of demands. One of those demands, buying him a book on prison uprisings. Of course, we weren't about to do that. But in his letters to me, we did learn about the anger he still holds for Ray Carruth. My supporters wish me to cease doing interviews, Watkins wrote. But he added, I do wish to tell the public a few points of concern. This is Watkins in his most recent prison photo. He told me an interview with me would be as a rebuttal to Ray Carruth and call him a name we can't repeat here. The last time Channel 9 spoke with Van Brett Watkins was back in 2003. He told our Jim Bradley about his conversion to Islam. Part of being a man is recognizing what you did. Yeah, I did. Those sins weighed on him, he said. Every day I think of Miss Adams. Every day I think of Chancellor, and every day I think of Sharika Adams and the wrong that I did. It's also clear that he thinks about Ray Carruth a lot. He wrote, I detest liars. Liars are destined for hellfires. 
a similar sentiment to 15 years ago. Would you, if you had a chance to say something to Chancellor, what would you say? Don't trust your father, son. In these recent letters, Watkins pointed out that he had owned up to what he did, writing, all I have is my word, and I always tell the truth, even against myself. Watkins, now 44 years old, has at least another 20 or 30 years before he could ever have the chance to face Ray Carruth as a free man again. I think of my whole life every day. So as if it's a man dying, and they say, well, his whole life flashes in front of him. Well, this occurs for me every day. And he wishes one of those moments that still flashed by had played out differently. If I could change things, I should have killed him. And let me just say that uh, Van Brett Watkins was without a doubt the most intimidating man I have ever seen. My impression was looking into those eyes, no fear whatsoever and no regard for human life. And by the way, by the time he gets out of prison, he will be in his mid 70s at the earliest. So what about the others involved? Michael Kennedy pled guilty to conspiracy and second degree murder and served 10 and a half years behind bars. Stanley Abraham pled guilty to assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill and shooting into occupied property. Abraham served three months, then was put on probation.